Hey everyone, it's Twitter on Maxwell and welcome to another TW video. We're going for a little special event today with the upcoming first episode of the Mix Max Challenge coming live on is it Facebook Watch or something this coming Tuesday. Why not do a Mix Max Challenge way into the future in this TW save? Decide to go for it and um, to really just try something different, as I say, hopefully, as I say, get some fun matchups and maybe even promote some talents during the show. Uh, the way I formatted it is a little bit different to the WWE. Uh, it's a strict one-off event here. It is going to be usual four quarter finals, two semis and a final. Main eventers getting a little five on five matchup like you see in, in New Japan, just to keep them happy in case they miss the match, you know, miss the event and then morale goes down the pan. So a couple of things on the show as well. We're going to have a title match and potentially we might see a firing post-match because somebody in the save is extremely annoying and is pissing me off. So I'll go through the, um, the, the the teams as we go along. Each of them will have a little segment to promote themselves as a team. Um, I did tweet them out, the, the teams as well. But it's a WWE Network exclusive on the 4th week of June and we are live in the Carrier Dome in New York. So let's kick on with these 23 segments, 243 minutes. The WWE Mix Match Challenge. 2020. So we start the show with our first team, and I've decided to opt for the architect Seth Rollins and the last kicker, Becky Lynch. So the good thing about this is um, I haven't really cared if you're, you know, it's not Raw teams, it's not SmackDown teams, it's just generally two baby faces, two heels together, and yeah, it doesn't matter what brand you're on, just to give a bit of freshness in creating a matchup. So a good team here. Um, as I say, Seth's had a, a decent run in the SmackDown brand. Becky's just won the money in the bank for the women, so definitely a good person to have there. And them teaming up starts the show with a strong start. Gets the crowd a little hotter and pretty respectable A90 rating. The second team is our first couple. Uh, this also got the crowd a little bit hotter. It was a C64 and that is the team of both SmackDown superstars again, Alexa Bliss and Murphy, of course, a couple in real life. And yeah, I just felt like it'd be a good matchup here. It would be, as I say, Little Miss Bliss teaming with apparently, well, currently NXT's best kept secret. Might be something for Murphy in the future. I did actually want to keep him and Blake together, but negative chemistry quickly aid face to that idea. Match itself, the opener was decent, but it saw Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins defeat Murphy and Alexa Bliss in 14-14 when Seth Rollins defeated Murphy with God's Last Gift. As you would expect, of course, main man in the match was Seth Rollins, weak link was Murphy. A B80 is not too bad. Good performance, Seth with 94. Becky Lynch with a 80, a 70 for Alexa Bliss and a 60. For Murphy, but overall I was pretty happy with that. It was a nice wee chance to give somebody like Murphy an opportunity against Seth. So Becky and Seth will advance to the semi-finals. Next up, another couple. It's Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano. Smackdown's Johnny Gargano and Raw's Candice LeRae. Good opportunity for Candice to do something. We've not really done anything with her. And their promo introducing the team gets a C plus 70. And they're going to be teaming up against the newly formed team. In English, and of course his wife, Raquel Diaz. I just brought Shaw Guerrero back. I just felt like I had enough of a job in the VOD villains out. Uh, just to say, Yo, let's get rid of the Simon Gotch. I'm actually really enjoying the stuff Aiden English is doing. With Rusev, I was actually enjoying the stuff he was doing as a solo artist beforehand. And, you know, adding that manager of his wife in there, uh, you know, as he's a heel, allows for the, the tainted victories via manager manager interference. So a C minus fifty four it certainly started a project. And the match between those teams had decent wrestling but a little heat. But it did see Aiden English and Raquel Diaz pick up the win with a shock victory over Larry and Gargano in twelve oh eight when Raquel Diaz defeated Candice Larry by a quick roll up. B minus seventy three and Johnny Gargano the main man in the matchup. Great chemistry between Candice and Gargano. So actually give me an idea, which I'll, I'll present at the end of the show, and you can let me know your, your thoughts on that. But an 84 for Gargano, a 70 for Larray, 51 for Raquel, 
and a 57 for Aiden. As I say, it's a massive build-up for Aiden English as they build up into the semi-finals. Could Aiden English win it on Rusev Day? Remains to be seen. Next up, the tag team is going to be Kelly and Dane and Nikki Cross. Um, as far as I'm aware, another couple in the WWE. A C plus 68. Kelly and Dane was underwhelming. Nikki was fantastic, of course, with pushed. Nikki strong as it's one of our most dominant female competitors. Kelly and I've never had a chance to book him as, as Big Demo. You know, he'll get an opportunity eventually. And that's a good place to start. So a C plus 68 there. They'll be taking on the dream team of Bailey and Kota Ibushi. They cut their promo to team up. As I say, both have been okay. I suppose Bailey's kind of faltered a little bit. But we'll try and build, build her up. You know, we're not going to give up on her. We're not, we're not the WWE in real life. But that should be an interesting tag team. And that matchup in the first round. Decent matchup. Bailey and Kota Ibushi defeated Nikki Cross and Killian Dane in 9.50 when Kota defeated Killian Dane by pinfall with a standing Shooting Star Press. In terms of in-ring work, Kota Bushi was head and shoulders above everyone else. Killian Dane being a weak link, but a good opportunity for him regardless. The BA one's good to see. Uh, really strong performances from Kota and Nikki Cross with uh, a 77. And in our final round of first round matches, we have got the dream team of Dana Brooke and The Miz, of course. We all know about Dana Brooke's story in here, uh, completely parallel to real life, where she's been in NXT for so long, her skills were absolutely brilliant coming out of that. We booked her strong, we really protected her, and she's really just turned into the best women's athlete in this game. Her and Charlotte have been fantastic, and it was a good opportunity, as I say, to keep pushing Dana in this tournament. So we've got another Miz, so she could go quite far with him in the team. But, uh, as I say, just really delighted how she's turned out in this, and the promo is an A-star. 100. Their opponents will be Austin Aries and the talented Rhea Ripley. As I say, big things planned for Rhea Ripley. I feel like definitely there's potential there and a good chance for Austin Aries to get himself back in the good book. So B plus 84, Rhea Ripley enjoyed the freedom of being unscripted, so that's good to see. I will say um, Sasha Banks not in the tournament because she has a, a knock. Uh, it's an injury basically that will make the match rating go down, so didn't put her in it. Charlotte still suffering from that injury from Money in the Bank, so yeah, she's not in it either, I'm afraid. Uh, and Asuka, I think, is suffering from an injury, possibly, or I maybe just didn't include her, because I felt these teams made a bit more sense. Match itself was partly good. Great wrestling, decent reaction from the crowd. And it was Dana Brooke and the Miz defeating Austin Aries and the talented Rhea Ripley in 12.55. When the Miz defeated Austin Aries with the skull crushing finale, Rhea Ripley was the weak link. Of course, we are going to book her going forward, but a B82. Let's have a look for all this. Austin Aries is a gimmick that's getting stale. The Miz was off his game, but Dana and the Miz had a, a good showing and get excellent chemistry. Interesting, the Miz got a 93 performance off his game, and Dana got a 99. Uh, match suffered from a lack of psychology. I'm quite surprised at that. I thought the Miz and Aries would be able to carry one. And yeah, just. Future heel turn hinted by double A as well. What I'll say is, because there was a, a limit on the match, less than 60 minutes, no storyline attached, it wouldn't get higher than a B82. But it's interesting, it's the first time Austin Aries hasn't been a dick. And yes, yeah, probably would be, I think, a good rating, a rating uh, matchup, should we have had a storyline and someone with psychology in there. But after the matchup, we've got Shane McMahon coming out, and basically on the last show, the last SmackDown about, Austin Aries came up and basically phoned in his performance. Uh, so with that, I was expecting that to appear in that last segment there. It didn't, but basically he's went, nah, enough of your crap. You've been in that matchup, you've lost, even though you're a babyface. You will defend your Cruiserweight Championship against Tommaso Ciampa, and that match is next. So a B80. And because he's been a dick, in a good matchup, Tommaso Ciampa defeats Austin Aries in 13:37 by pinfall. Project Ciampa, and he becomes the new cruiserweight champion. So a B80. Um, in all intents and purposes, we are going to fire Austin Aries after this show. He's still very over. He's still very uh, talented. But yeah, phoning it in, and I'm looking for any excuse to punt some wrestlers. So yeah, TNA, you want to pick him up what you have done in your life. Go for it. I mean, I was so concerned by this matchup actually sucking that I 
made this matchup the storytelling match of the night. So surprise a pleasant rating, but yeah, Champa will drop down to the cruiserweight division. He'll have a good run there, a good heel champion in Austin Aries. Go to TNA. Second round, and it was a bout that had superb wrestling and good heat. It was a team of Dana Brooke and the Miz advancing to the final with a victory over Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins in 1803 when Dana defeated Becky using a foreign object. Becky was a weak link here. B plus 88 is very good to see. Um, it, what it doesn't highlight is the fact it was a Neville distraction, hence the no longer King of the Cruiserweight storyline advances. So say that. You might add in the stuff that's happening in the next pay-per-view, because obviously Seth Rollins is your number one contender for the World Heavyweight title. But Seth went 94, Becky 81, 99 performances from both The Miz and Dana Brooks. They are showing excellent chemistry, and they will advance. And at the final, Dana improving technical skills, negatives, just a few. We just got booking, no, sorry, road agent notes. Yep, Seth Rollins should be distracted by King Neville. And Dana Brooke debuted a new spot to help get her great heel heat. Her psychology will be helped by using it as a go-to spot in the future. So that's good to see. We've got more ability. Uh, she's obviously improving like nothing else, and that's good to see. And your other semi-final. But they had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. Bailey and Kota Ibushi, as you would expect, defeat Aiden English and Raquel Diaz. 12-05 when Bailey defeated Raquel Diaz with the hugplex. In terms of in-ring work, it was Kota Ibushi, of course. Head and shoulders above everyone else. A B80. The Bushy obviously looks really good. Better improvements from the other wrestlers partaking. Interestingly, Kota improves performance skills in Raquel and Rumble. But yeah, it's a short match up to do the job. And yeah, we've got a final of a Bushy and Bailey against Dana Brooke and the Miz. Next up, Kofi Kingston, just a random promo. As I say, we obviously are teasing the split of the new day. And he's just talking about Big E and obviously the tribulations they've had since Kofi accidentally cost them the World Heavyweight Championship against Dean Ambrose, so that's a, a B80. It's kind of that face where he's looking like, oh, I'm a, you're offended, ooh. Next up, just a little match up here, uh, really, to sh to highlight, I suppose, someone we're going to be pushing in the future. Uh, first time in this save, it was a decent, uh, sorry, great wrestling match with decent reaction from the crowd. And it saw Fergal Devitt defeat Splitch, uh, Switchblade, Jay White, from the Exiles in 11.51 with the pinfall after a Shingata Prince's throne. After a distraction from Dash Wilder. So we are going to be continuing on the feud between the Exiles and the Revival. And they cost Switchblade, Jay White, the win here. It was non-title, but B80. Two good improvements for Switchblade, and overall, nice little showcase match up there. I think a promo from the Usos, just continue on the feud between the Usos and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. These will all be involved in a big match up later on tonight, so that's an A94. Usos have just been knocking out the park. This is proper Uso penitentiary stuff. And the co main event was, as I said, the 10-man tag, and it was a superb matchup. We saw Sami Zayn, Alistair Black, Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, and Big E defeat the team of the Usos, Dean Ambrose, AJ Styles, and Rusev in 25-17. When Roman Reigns defeated AJ Styles by pinfall. So B plus 88, Roman has to look strong, but again, we are building up as the dominant Intercontinental Champion. Keel getting better his gimmick. The weakest performances, of course, would have been Big E win 82, AG win 82, which is not bad considering the declining physical ability, and Jimmy Uso with 78. So Jimmy Uso's one, again, we'll still work on. The three storylines advance, a couple of skill improvements there. And yeah, just a few negatives, but overall, pretty happy with that. Promo for the final, the main event, just Miz and Dana Brooke just saying, you know, they've came this far. What are they going to lose to Kota Bushi and they're going to lose to you know, Bailey, who's you know just hugging people? You know, it's a pro it's a proper dominant heel and a and you know in a in a kind of cocky heel. It's kind of like a self entitled heel in terms of the Miz. So obviously the two of them are great. Dana improving again at acting and an A ninety five is just fantastic. So how will it go? Drum roll, please. Pretty happy with that. Great showcase for the women's wrestling as well. And about the had superb wrestling and good heat, the team of Dana Brooke and the Miz 
defeated Bailey and Kota Bushi in 2405 when Dana Brooke defeated Bailey with a Simone Driver. The first winners of the Mixed Match Challenge, I might make it every June, has went to Miz and Dana Brooke. So Bailey's a weak link there. A rated matchup. If you look at the, the ratings, wow, 90 for Ibushi, 72 for Bailey. Miz and Brooke get a 99 each, but the Miz was off his game and get a 99. That just shows how awesome, no pun intended, he's been. Uh, it's just been absolutely fantastic there. So, no skill improvements, and yeah, just pretty much happy with that. And then we end the show, the two heels celebrating to boots. So overall, the first inception of the... Mixed Match Challenge has not gained us any pop. It was broadcast in the networks, it was everywhere. But that was more on the basis because we gave lesser uh, over talents a bit more time. So you wouldn't normally give them an air time. We did give to Aiden English, to Killian Dane, and Raquel Diaz. So I don't mind not taking out a win on that because at the end of the day, it was just a different video and a different kind of show I wanted to do. And if it benefits the likes of Killian Dane, uh, Diaz, and English going forward, then I'm all. For it. So I'm just going to quickly, as I say, do a quick speech, and it will be just to Dana Brooke and The Miz for winning, so they'll get pointed out as good examples. So while it loads to the screen and as we get ready to fire Austin Aries, I just really want to ask you guys opinion on something. So we've done the Mixed Match Challenge there. There's been a few title belts that haven't really kicked on in the forum of the Trios Championship, and the Shine Tag Team Championships are getting used to an extent. But what I want to know is, would you guys be happy if I made a mixed tag team championship? So, kind of, I suppose, under gender, but basically a male, one male, one female tag team championship. So let me know your thoughts on that, and we could get that introduced uh, by SummerSlam. So, again, if you want to drop me in the comments section, any teams you want to see that could compete for that going forward, because uh, obviously, like Sedana Brook may be involved in other storylines, but let me know and we could get that started up. So, the good thing as well, before we fire Austin Aries, we've got our six month deals of who's won each tournament, as uh, uh, trophy, sorry, as we're into 2020. So, even though he is the age of 43 now, he is still dominating the rest of the world, and it is, of course, Hiroshi Tanahashi as the wrestler of the year so far. Company of the year. Is New Japan, so I haven't had a great year so far. That's quite worrying. Team of the year, I think this is going to be dominated by Japanese guys. Has went to Rani Dupree and Joe Doring of New Japan. Match of the year, hey, we've won that. Match of the year so far is the one hour Ironman match payback 2020, where Roman Reigns defeated Drew McIntyre. But hey, Roman Shay, of course. Show of the year so far has went to WrestleMania 36. And if I can quickly go through my history, we can just quickly recap what happened on that fateful day if we can find Mania 36. So if we go all the way, we'll just go through the main event kind of matches, but of course that saw that SmackDown Live beforehand, Lee, that's very silly. Uh, WrestleMania, as I say, we had the main event of Dean Ambrose against Seth Rollins. We had Charlotte versus Dana Brooke as our co-main. We had Reigns versus Drew McIntyre the first time. Uh, other matches, of course, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, Barry Corbin, Randy Orton, John Cena's last matchup before um, he got taken out. John Cena versus Daniel Bryan when he won the record championship, and of course Fergal Devitt against Omega and Styles. So that's just a few of the matches that were on that fantastic show. No wonder it was show of the year so far. Young Wrestler of the Year has went to the great Suzuki, or Suzuki 2. Apologies for butchering that. That's just basically a new generated guy that was added on with Felicia's mod. Uh, as I just let him stay in New Japan because I say it's not someone I'll be looking to sign. Veteran Wrestler went to El Zorro. I think he's in AAA or not. He's in New Japan as well. Fair play. Female Wrestler of the Year so far. It has usually been a woman that have won it. And this year it's going to... I'm going to say Charlotte. Really? That's interesting. I didn't expect that. I wouldn't have said Bailey's had a great year so far. Let's have a look at our match history. Yeah, she's only had four wins and eleven losses. Her highest rating was the ninety-four in the final. But yeah, she's never really had any horrible matches apart from when she teamed up with Beautiful B to take on the Blonde Bombshells, which is of course um, 
with Morgan and Mandy Rose. But yeah, maybe we should give Bailey a push going forward. That could be an option if she is the Women's Wrestler of the Year. As far as I'm aware, it's not ever been won by her before. If we just go to title history. I know Becky's got one. I think Paige's got one. I'm sure Dana Brooks got one. I just check that. I'll do it and check a second after we've independent wrestler. I can, though. So someone we've obviously released, and she's your, your best independent wrestler. Apart from that, I don't really see anything. Oh, New Japan on ITV in the UK. Fantastic reviews for the Mixed Match Challenge, and yeah, nothing else that directly affects us. Let's quickly have a look then, because female wrestler has generally always been WWE, yep. Um, first year I've done it was uh, Becky Lynch won it, because obviously we pushed her with nothing else. My second year was uh, Puss Page, Brittany Knight. The third year was Crazy Mary Dobson, we gave her a strong push, and last year of course went to Dana Brooke. So, we could win it this year. It's going to be interesting, but as I say, maybe we'll give Bailey a push to to see how she does. So let's go a quick look here. Uh, we are just sending Rebecca James to development at Lucha Underground to try and get her over a little bit. As I did confirm, we have signed Jake Hager. We are bringing back Jack Swagger. We can make him a proper badass and, and run through people as if he's had a good run with Bellator. We are trying to bring in Frankie Kazarian. I mean, I've got Christopher Daniels doing nothing. Why not bring in Kazarian for another decent tag team. A few notes, uh, finished first out of two in the USA in the national battles, first out of three in Canada, first out of three in Mexico and in Japan as well. Oh, TNA are trying to, to, to make his bid a bit more. Let's have a wee look and see what they've put in. He's also their champion, so if I could do that to piss him off, that'd be great. 22.6k, they haven't revealed the length, so we'll just do what we do best. Because money's not really an option, I don't mind paying over the odds, so I'll pay 30. Now I'll go three years just to be safe. I know it is overpaying for Kazarian, but when you look at us having 500 million in the bank, I think we can do it just to piss TNA off. Uh, Murphy wants some wins, we'll look into that. 41.48 TV rating. Roman Reigns doesn't like Brodus, and Becky likes Bailey. So Bailey is doing all. Well, the right things. But as I said, 518 million in the bank, making 15 million profit every month. A shitload of people are unhappy. Uh, Titus is leaving. Sorry, uh, Titus is leaving. We're releasing a few other people. Got a lot of unhappy people. That's cool. Just because they weren't on that pay-per-view. As I say, I need to try and find stuff for both, well, both Alice to get big morale issues, which is worrying. Because he has due a big push and is on 51 grand a week already. Let's just give him a massive bonus. Going to regret doing that. He won't even be happy with that. Yep, biggest one I can give, he's just down to morale issues, but as I say, we've got plenty of money to try and cure most of these. It is difficult to try to book every day when you try to rush through shows, but that's what it is. It's cool. We'll, we'll deal with the cards we're dealt with, but yeah. So Austin Aries, let's have a look. Austin Aries is angry. 36k, he is on a three and a half year deal, so it's going to cost me a shitload of money. Red Tights is going to go anyway. It is 1.6 million it's going to cost us, but you know what? Fuck you, Austin Aries. So Austin Aries is gone. Red Tights is leaving anyway tomorrow, so that's cool. No big deal about that. And, uh, yeah. Don't cross the boss, as they say. But that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you thought of the Mixed Match Challenge. Uh, if you've made any of the challenges yourself, let me know who's going over in yours. What's your prediction for when the tournament actually takes place, uh, or begins this Tuesday? And, yeah, if you do want to see a Mixed Tag Team Championship, and that is what I could call it, and what teams you'd like to see compete for that. But cheers for watching, guys. Let me know how your series are getting on as well. Any comments regarding the series, your own series, these are all deeply appreciated. Any likes and shares are always appreciated as well. And keep supporting the rest of the community in the Greater Software Forums and Fantasy Bookers subreddit. Cheers, take it easy, and come on, Jack Swagger and Cody Rhodes in Champions League Season 3. Take it easy, bye-bye.